everybody. Good morning. I am, uh, whew, I kind of slid in here by the seat of my pants, didn't I, Vicki? A little bit. The Bible lady made me late. No, it wasn't the Bible lady's fault. The Bible lady was on time standing in her driveway reminding me of my Granny Gilroy. <laughs> standing there with her pocketbook waiting, pocket yeah, <laughs> waiting to ride. To go. You had not been here a while for a while because you've been kind of busy taking care of a little boy. I love that little boy. Oh, I love we that love little that boy. We love that little boy. Let me tell you what he did last night. God, he's sweet. He slept three hours, two hours and 50 minutes in my arms. And last week, I did lay him down on the bed and let him finish his nap, because I think he sleeps a little bit better that way. But yesterday, I just kept rocking him, and it just feels so good to hold that little boy. And look at him. So I rocked him asleep. two hours and 50 minutes, yeah, you know. Yeah. I just didn't want to lay him down. And um, you would be so proud of him, because I put on Dave and Ava last night, and you know how we're noticing the things he remembers? Mm -hmm. And it came to the finger thing, and he stuck his finger up. And I said, how does a 14-month-old relate to all He's this so stuff? He's so smart. He is. And, and we're, get, we're learning the one, two, and we're getting to those things. It just blows my mind. Well, my favorite is still, and I must tell your listening audience, that he was watching Jack and Jill go up the hill to fetch a pail of water, and when Jack fell down, he fake fell down <laughs> and rolled off the little pallet thing I have for him there. Just to, and looked at me and went, ha, ha, ha. And I, I was like, him. oh, God, I love you. You are just so funny. And he did it to be funny. He likes making you laugh. He and does. He, he does make you he laugh. He does. Well, last night, um, his daddy came to get him. And his daddy had to go outside and put the stroller in the truck. And Riker just, <gasps> <gasps> and started sobbing because he thought his daddy was leaving. And I said, no. I said, he's just putting your stroller up. He'll be right back. And big tears. And it, and it just, and I said, you understand how much a parent means to a child. Oh, all you have to do is watch mom or dad walk yes, in. And that yes, face. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes, his, his whole, everything changes. And he just, he's so excited to see them. And because we have a, a dinger on the door um, driveway, we know when somebody's coming in. So when the dean goes off, he starts looking, you know, and it's usually mama. And um, he is so excited to see his mama and daddy. And I told you about the message at church Sunday was um, Jesus Loves the Little Children right. and, and Jesus Loves Me was the song. And, and, and it's about this world is not doing what we should for our children, is it? Well, I, you know, it is a precarious place and there is a move that is very dangerous to children. You see it in various advertising. You see it in various news articles uh, where basically they're trying to normalize child abuse. Mm -hmm. And I have been saying it for years that you have to guard your children. It's, it's sad, mm -hmm. but it's true. Mm -hmm. You have to guard your children. and. The farther Human the trafficking is real. Human trafficking is real. If no other reason, if, if you want a reason to vote for President Trump, it is what he has done via an executive order to crack down on child sex trafficking. He has shut down child sex trafficking rings around the world, not just here in the United States, mm -hmm. but of course when you, when you cut off a conduit here in the United States, it affects the rest of the world. But um, there are a lot of things that we're not hearing on the news that, you know, alternative news sources mm -hmm. will report. And it's very unattractive. Most people, you don't want to talk about this stuff. No. Well, you don't want to know about it. But it's, you know, if we don't know about it and if we don't address it, it's going to get worse. But you have got to, uh, well, and I've told you probably here on this show, my boys did not go to the restroom at the mall or at the restaurant by themselves mm -hmm. until they were probably, I don't know, 30, 32, <laughs> uh, when they were old enough, you know, I couldn't take them in the women's restroom mm -hmm. anymore because mm -hmm. they just weren't comfortable with that. I would stand outside the door mm -hmm. of the men's mm -hmm. restroom. Mm -hmm. And if it was too long, I would open that door and go, boys, are you okay? Mm -hmm. Because even back then, you know, 30 years oh, ago, yeah. Yeah. things were happening in restrooms in public places. Yep. And now yep. they want to open that up to predators and I know not everybody who is 
different mm -hmm. is a predator, but a lot of them are. Yeah. And yeah. regardless, <clears throat> our children need to be left alone and let them be children. Let them be children. Let them to pretend to be whatever they want to be. But don't, you know, just, yep. you, I don't even want to go there. Well, last night on the news, um, and you don't watch local news, but on the local news, um, a <clears throat> prostitution ring was broken up, mm -hmm. and awesome. Two pimps were arrested. Six female participants were arrested. Two young girls who had been sold into sex trafficking were, right. were there and were rescued. So six were willing participants. Two were well, you know enslaved. What? When you say willing participants, I know that there are some, but most of the time, women who are involved in prostitution, um, probably most of the time, it's drug related. Mm -hmm. They they exactly. their pimps get them strung out on drugs, and then to get the drugs, they have to perform. But there are a lot of women who have been. They have been in it since they were children, yeah. when they were right. un unbelievable but true, sold by their parents mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because some I'm, people will do anything <coughs> That's for drugs. been on the news lately. People yeah. are actually <coughs> making deals on the internet to yes. purchase yes. a child. Yes. That's crazy. Just recently, I don't know if you know what Bitcoin is or <coughs> not. I do. I saw that. But that huge, it was a worldwide sex trafficking ring children and mm -hmm. uh, it's not just women it's it's boys girls mm -hmm. men women um, sold into basically slavery mm -hmm. and they they use the they call them the dark webs they go on chat boards where you basically can't be traced this kind of thing well let me give you a little hint all you uh, bad guys you can be traced mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and they're tracing you and they're they're gonna find you but anyway um and and sadly sometimes they get caught and sometimes it's somebody that you were like wow that was my neighbor or wow well that was my thing, kid's yeah. fifth grade teacher everybody or, wow, says that was my i knew them they seem like such nice yeah, people exactly and you know there's a lot of nice people out there with dark things in their closet yep. And it's uh, unfortunate, but again, if you don't raise awareness and you're not, you don't know that these things are going on, mm -hmm. uh, you don't know that they need the help. You don't, and you see all of the, the abused women's shelters and the, uh, you know, I've said this before, the Bible says that evil is going to be so great and so common we have seen that it. people's hearts are going to grow cold. And I've told you a lot lately, I'm really worried about my heart. There's just so much evil. It seems insurmountable. And rather than try to do something to stop it, you just give up and just turn off the TV and, we can't, and go about yeah, we life. Can't give up. Yeah. We can't give up. Well, well, yesterday we tried to laugh a little. And we did laugh a little because I went through this little book and it's uh, something that I got when I was um, involved in cleaning out a house for a, uh, an estate sale. And um, I love this. You will love this because this is one of your favorite places to go. You know it's time for a second opinion when your doctor's insurance forms have coupons for Domino's. <laughs> <laughs> we like to order from Domino's. And um, and then you think your surgeon performs the Catholic, what is that, genuflect? Genuflect, yeah. Just because your case, just before your case, but actually his hand is asleep. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> this is crazy. This, this is, is from the doctor's house. This is from the doctor's, and this is crazy because we, we look at, we trust our doctor, we trust our lawyers, we trust our teachers, we trust... And sadly, in today's world, sometimes you don't know who to trust. And, and yesterday, as I walked Riker to town, I walked to town twice with him yesterday, and we had so much fun, and he loved, he got to see big trucks, he got to see the train, and you and I know a lot about the train, because the train, the train in Ballgram will wake you up if you live near the tracks, and we both do. Is it going by three <coughs> times now? Is it it's going more than usual, and it has a lot of cars. I know but was he was so excited watching and looking at the trucks and seeing the big stuff. 
and a, a and not an excavator, but a big huge piece of equipment went by on a low boy, and he was just all excited. And in his eyes, I see the world as an amazing place for him to learn and grow. And in his eyes, I see the fear of me worrying about who do you trust what him kind of with? What world what? is he yes. going to be yes. in when it's he grows scary. up? Mm -hmm. yeah. It is scary, and that's why, and, and Catherine is, is smart. I know a lot of people make fun of the helicopter moms. I was a helicopter mom before that term was ever, you mm -hmm. know, because I was informed and I was aware, and I don't know that I ever, you know, prevented anything from happening or not, but I was going to try. Yeah. And my son, who is 30 now, when I was in Orlando with him, he said, you know, Mom, you remember when you wouldn't let us watch, you know, whatever it was? And I said, yeah, I do. I said, no, I don't regret it for a minute. Mm -hmm. I said, I, it was my job to protect <coughs> your innocence. And, yep. you know, one of the things that really parents, and you hear it all the time, and who, don't be your child's best friend. Mm -hmm. Be your child's mother. They're going to have plenty of best friends. Granny, grandma can take care of the spoiling and mm -hmm. the best friend. And, <laughs> um, but I am so glad that I gave my boys parenting. And we loved, I mean, we were together 24-7 up until they, you know, basically moved to Orlando. Um, because I enjoyed being with my children. I liked going places with them. It was fun, you know, you get to go all those kid movies and mm -hmm, stuff mm -hmm. <laughs> and oh, have yeah. a reason except, you know, yeah. you don't have to go in by yourself and, <coughs> you know, be awkward. But uh, I don't regret, regret it. And not only, again, the Bible says train up your child in the way that they should go. And when you study the Hebrew on that, it's like, you know your child. And my older son, when it says train up in a way that he should go, um, it's like the, the, the implication there or the inference you could get from the Hebrew is the way a tree grows toward the sun. Mm -hmm. And you orient your child's activities and teaching and, you know, toward his, he, he was not athletic at all. He could have been. He was built for uh, sports, mm -hmm. but he didn't like sports. And so, you know, we concentrated on things, you know, that he enjoyed. Stephen loves sports and we concentrated, you know, so whatever their bent is, go with their bent. Mm -hmm. Don't try, don't try to make a doctor out of a lawyer, mm -hmm. you know, because a lot of parents, you know, they live vicariously through right. their children right. and this right. kind of thing. And there's nothing wrong with giving your child the opportunities that you never had, of course. But don't force them, in, you know, to fit a round peg into a mm -hmm. square hole, mm -hmm. so to speak. Mm -hmm. uh, but these days in particular, the more I learn about what's going on out there in the big bad world. It's scary. You have to protect, you have to guard, mm -hmm. guard your children. Yeah. And, um, but <clears throat> if I could say one thing, it was, and, and I'm speaking particularly to mothers, you know, of, of young daughters, is train your daughters to understand how valuable they are and that they're nobody's property mm -hmm. and that they can make decisions and you don't have to get married at 18. You know, mm -hmm. you can wait till 25. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah. Your eggs are still good for having yeah. children at yeah. 25. Yeah. And, and allow yourself time to grow up and, and there's a saying that I've seen a lot lately, know that you can live on your own mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and that you don't, you know, I remember when you're a teenager, you got to have a boyfriend, you got to mm -hmm. have a boyfriend. No, mm -hmm. you don't. Yeah. You don't. Yeah. Uh, it's great if you do, but it's okay. If it's the right one. And mothers, train your children, train your daughters that, and of course I'm coming from a very personal experience of I was 20, I met my first husband, he was 29, he was much older, he was very controlling, you know, lots of other stuff that, I, you know, for the sake of my children, I won't say, but mothers help your daughters not get into a situation where they are controlled and they feel like they have no choices, mm -hmm, they mm -hmm. must obey, mm -hmm. you know, this man, whatever, um, and then spend 20 years of their life 
somewhere that they don't belong, that they never should have and, been in and, the first place. And sadly, and, and you know, I make fun of this all the time because I tell people, they're like, well, I, have a, I, I want to go out on a date. I want to meet somebody. I want to do this. Well, you don't meet somebody in a bad place and it turn out to be a good situation. Right, right. So, Stay out of the bars. So, <laughs> so, so join organizations or clubs or do things mm -hmm. around good people. So I tell my son, Mama go to church. To, well, uh, not only good people. Mama would say, sugar, if you don't ever date a poor man, you'll never fall in love with him. <laughs> well, Mama, that's a weird way to look at life. But, but it, the same goes, if you don't ever date a bad person, you won't fall in love with a bad person. Look wisely, because I had a weird dream last night, and I told you about it, and it was so funny. And um, I was like, why did I dream about that? You know, why did I do that? There were days that I struggled and suffered and did and walked to work and, and fed my children when nobody else was there to feed my children. I did all these things because of mistakes I made in my life. But it was decisions I made early on that were the mistakes I made that brought me my greatest joy because they brought me my exactly, children. Exactly, exactly. So, so, so we, we made mistakes. Yeah, and, and then God, Romans 8, 28, God will bring good out of the bad to those who are called according to his purpose. There you go. And, and he will, and he does, and he has, and he's faithful. God is faithful. Lord, oh, you're so faithful. Um, but it doesn't change the fact that the Bible instructs us to instruct our children mm -hmm. and to raise our children and to teach our children the ways of this book and that's where you know ultimately you're gonna you're gonna find happiness um, but again I, I, my heart is just for the the young girls mothers mm -hmm. mothers mm -hmm. teach your teach your daughters yeah, yeah. Uh, and instruct them in the as, the Bible says, I'm the Bible lady, when I would get uh, in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. When I would get down and out and mad at myself, I often said, why didn't I listen to my mother? Why didn't I listen to my mother? Because we all assume, I think when a girl turns 14, all of a sudden your mom's stupid. And your mom's really not stupid. 13. Yeah. Well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You all of a sudden think that you know it all. And well, I look. It's as sad. stupid as we were when we were young, um, I, I think that may be preferable to today with the exposure via social media to the world. I mean, how many times now have we heard about these young girls going to meet this pervert yeah. who yeah. you know abducts her or whatever? Yes, and that they met online. And, and not only that, even those years ago when my boys were little, I had to protect them. Those days were tame compared to what's Today, out there now. It's scary. I don't even go to the movies. I would not go to an R-rated movie because R now is X. Mm -hmm. And PG-13 with the language and partial nudity. Mm -hmm. You know, we have allowed the culture to define us. And, and we as Christians, that's backwards. We're mm -hmm. supposed to influence the culture and what's happening is the culture is influencing us mm -hmm. and it's more important for us to not offend somebody who is openly, brazenly, you know, living in sin against God's word, will not say anything. And we're allowing our children to accept this as normal mm -hmm. and it's not normal. And you know, it's, it's a fine line because not everybody believes like I, I believe. I know Christians who read the same Bible and they're like, oh, well, I don't think it says that. You know, for their sake, I hope they're right. If you, if you wanna play that game with God and chance mm -hmm. getting up there and him saying, mm -hmm. no, you had it wrong. And I think people know when they have it wrong when they're twisting scripture to try to squeeze something. Mm -hmm. What they want to do is they want to squeeze their sin out of it, whatever I'm currently involved in. And I have been involved in sin, trust me. And I wish that some of the things I have done in my past were not sin. But the good news is, is there's forgiveness through Jesus Christ. And that's the whole purpose that he came, that those who are, and I've said this to you before, if there's somebody who's struggling with their sin, but they're trying, you know, to do right and live right, and they quote unquote fall off the wagon every once in a while, and they're sincere in their heart and their repentance, and, and they're sorry for 
um, basically for disappointing God, that's what it boils down to. Are you disappointing God? It doesn't really matter what you think. You remember my mm -hmm. famous story. It doesn't matter what I think. Mm -hmm. It matters what God says. matters what God says. Um, uh, lost my train of thought there. But anyway, forgiveness, and that's, that's kind of sort of where my message, my message is, today. is today. Well, we, we have seen, um, and, and I didn't even talk to you about this before, but I was blown away. Kanye West has a new album out, and it's called Jesus, Jesus the King, I believe. I believe that's right. And this weekend, what, what is it? Say? Follow God. This weekend, this weekend, I'm getting cold chills talking about this because this is a man that I would never have spent one dime on his music. Well, I, I would still never... wouldn't if he's and he's singing Christian music now, but yeah. I'm not into yeah. rap. I can't. Yeah, I can't do the it's rap. It's like a thing. series of really deep haikus. Weird, <laughs> but but I have watched this man, and he's just totally transformed. And this weekend, he had a prayer meeting, something, 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 that over 200 people were saved. A thousand. A thousand. A thousand, a thousand people. So if you think that you have been somewhere, maybe running around with the wrong crowd, maybe hanging out with drug dealers, maybe doing this, maybe doing this, and then you find yourself sitting in church, you know, you might be sitting next to somebody who two years ago was in the same place you right. were, but they've been in church two years. And, and it just is amazing. Because I, I, when I heard the number and I was like, really? Say what? You know, I'm like, are you kidding me? Well, I've but watched it is, a lot of... And it's free. Do you know that that is free to, to, to come well, to Jesus? Well, you know how I am about that. Yeah, you know, you don't is. have to sell salvation. You don't, you don't, yeah, you don't have to buy your salvation. I've heard several... Uh, of course, one of his songs, I believe, and these are reading articles um, that quote him, and one of his songs, quoting one of his songs, is, the Christians are going to judge me. Mm -hmm. The Christians are going to hate me. The Christians are going to be the one that says, I'm not for real. Mm -hmm. And I thought, how sad, because it's true. I mean, there is a place for discernment. We are called, you know, all this don't judge you lest you be judged. Mm -hmm. You know, stop abusing that scripture, okay? Mm -hmm. it's, if you're living, if you're doing something wrong and I say, hey, you know what? Don't, don't steal that. Uh, that's wrong. <gasps> don't judge me. I'm not judging you. I'm calling you out on your sin. That's not judging. Mm -hmm. But a lot of people abuse that one because they don't want people, you know, to call attention to what they know is blatantly sin. But um, the we are to discern. We are to judge. And the Bible is very clear that we judge each other as Christians. Very clear. And it says if you see your brother or sister in sin, you go and correct them gently. And it says, you know, don't get on your high horse thinking you're all that because you will fall into sin. And then it'll be your turn for somebody to come pick you up out of the mud. So God instructs us on how to um, discern if someone is, is truly born again. And it's a process. You know, you see the transformation right now. And anybody that's ever had a born, ex uh, born again experience, you know, for about a year, you're on this like super high. You're just high on Jesus. And you just, oh, you know, you cannot get enough of the Spirit of God, of the Word of God. And then it starts to taper off. And, and Paul talks a lot about, you know, people start with milk, but you're supposed to be discipled. And we're instructed, go find yourself a mentor, a teacher. Paul actually went, I don't remember the number of years, but it was a long time after his conversion from Saul of Tarsus to Paul the preacher to the Gentiles, a number of years that he spent with the apostles learning Jesus. You know, it just, and, and, and God does whatever he wants to do. He's God, he can handle it whatever way he wants to. Sometimes that transformation is miraculous and it just boom. And that might be what's happening with Kanye I don't know. We'll see. But he says, watch for their fruit. It, you Just like you judge a tree, if it's healthy or not, what's coming off that tree? Mm -hmm. And if what you see is coming as a result of his ministry is people hearing the gospel 
Wouldn't it, being wouldn't born that be again? amazing? Would that not be amazing? Well, it, it's already amazing. Yeah. A thousand yeah. people are. I mean, he could stop tomorrow. He's yeah. got a thousand people that he introduced to Jesus mm -hmm. that when we all stand before that great white throne, that's the only thing we take with us. Mm -hmm. Whatever we accumulate here on this earth is not going with us. All that we can say thank you for up there are the faces. When we look around and see a face, and they say, you help me get here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you remember the first time you heard this song, Just As I Am? Ah. And, yeah. and does it always? Yes, yes. You know, and I said, if Kanye could just do that, just as I am, because just as I am, no matter where you are at what point in your life, just as I am. Just like and, you are today. And, you don't have to yeah. take a bath. Yeah. You don't have to give up the drugs. You don't have to... Whatever you're in the middle of, it I don't care what it is. If you want to get out of it and you want to be born again, what I would encourage anybody, start talking to Jesus. Just start talking to Jesus. And you're like, well, I've tried that before. Well, have you? Have you ever sincerely in your heart just said, God, if you're real, Hear my prayer. Hear me talk. You, you don't have to vow us and those and the, and just start talking to him. Just start talking because Jesus is real. The Spirit of God is real, mm -hmm. and He will answer you. Now there are people. Well, I said something to Jesus. I said, if you're real, prove yourself to me. Mm -hmm. Okay, look. God knows your heart. He knows if you're a smart aleck and mm -hmm. you're, you know, all mm -hmm. huh. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't huh with God. Yeah. He's God. Yeah. yeah. And but when you come in sincere repentance and 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 when you need Him, when things are so hard and you're hurting so bad and that depression is so dark, and you cry out the name of Jesus, there is power in the name of Jesus. But he's very clear in the first chapter of Romans. He gives us free will. It's our choice. Mm -hmm. It is our choice mm -hmm. to live for him or not. Mm -hmm. And one of the most common questions is, well, if God is so full of love, why does he allow suffering? And if God is this, and why And a child he... to die and, and a yeah. parent to be killed in front of a child. We, Yeah, we've seen all that. And there's a lot of deep theological answers, but the basic question is, he did, uh, basic answer is, he did not create us as puppets. He created us in his image. And that's not just physical image. God has emotions. He hurts. His heart breaks. I think his heart is broken right now well, for sure things that are going is. on in of the world. Of course, of course. And the um, part of being human and having free will is we get to choose to follow God or not. I know that there are a lot of Christians out there that I disagree with because they um, don't interpret the Bible the way I do. I'm a what we call a fundamentalist. It means what it says. Mm -hmm. And sure, there's plenty of poetry and history and symbolic language used in the Bible, but it's pretty clear. And when you study it and you read it, you're like, yeah, that's pretty clear. And I don't want to live that way. And people don't want to give up. You know, what, what we never give up is our free will. Every day we wake up with free will, either to love him and serve him and obey him or not. And it's, you know, people, well, I just, I can't live that way. And I know people I love and they're doing this and that. And you're saying that they'll go to hell if they do that. And I'm like, no, I'm not saying that. I'm telling you, when I read the book, that's what I see. Mm -hmm. And well, we don't see that. And I'm like, okay, like I said, you, you want to you wanna take that chance, that's fine. I still love you. I'll still have fellowship with you. You're my friend. You know, I'm not going to ditch you, but that's where real tolerance is. Can you tolerate me and my belief in God and my adherence to his word and to his scripture for no other reason than I love God. I love God. I'm not afraid of God. Well, I have a healthy respect for God. You know, mm -hmm. a lot of people right. But I'm not afraid of God. I've had too many supernatural experiences in my life where he has proven himself to me. I have studied this book for many years, and this is a supernatural book. 
and people are like, puh, puh, puh. it was written by men. Yeah, it was written by men, inspired by the Holy Spirit, inspired by God himself. This is a very special document. And when you do start studying it, and you see how all these 66 books with all these different writers meshes perfectly. You know, it's written over a period of thousands of years and it all fits perfectly. When you put this puzzle together, it fits perfectly and it says Jesus. Mm -hmm. It's the whole, the whole book is all about God's plan of redemption because he knew when he created us with our free will that we were gonna blow it. Mm -hmm. And he already had a plan in place. But he lets us rule ourselves, make our own choices, make our own decisions. He will, God will never force himself on you because people are like, oh, well, the Holy Spirit raped Mary so that Jesus could be. That is the most ridiculous, vulgar, stupid thing I've ever heard. No, Mary said, let it be done unto me as you will, Lord. Mm -hmm. And we got a savior. Mm -hmm. And I keep looking it's at crazy. the clock knowing we got to have commercials. <laughs> we are going to have a commercial break. When we come back, I want to ask you one thing that really, really bugs me. Because my mother went through a period of time that she said, I don't know if I believe in God anymore. And during that time, I went to church more than I'd ever been to church in my life because I was so afraid because I knew that there was a God. As a child, I knew that there was God, but my mother had her doubts. How do you deal with somebody who says there is no God? There is no, that's, that's hocus pocus, that's nothing. How do you deal with that? Because I would be like, I would go out here and get in my car, pull out of here, and if I didn't believe in God, I'd get hit by a freight train. You know, that'd be my luck, and I would find out real quickly that he does exist. <laughs> so when we come back, we want to talk about that, and then you do have a message. So. We're going to take a commercial break because we have to. We're going to take care of business. Please don't forget our sponsors. Many of them have been with us since day one, Ed Singleton. We love you um, and hope that you're having a great day. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes. You have never been so happy Dancing, swinging, laughing at me Smile on my face It's happiness for days uh oh You are Memories of your first trip to the local Dairy Queen or your daily visit for a $5 lunch special. The Jasper Dairy Queen has been a part of the community for over 40 years. Locally owned and operated, Jasper DQ is the place where specialty items often become favorites. Burgers, shakes, chicken tenders with yummy dip and gravy. And don't forget the rings and fries. Celebration cakes are always fresh and fast and include the awesome blizzard cake. Stop by where folks are always meeting and eating. 515 at Highway 53. Just follow the crowd to the Dairy Queen. Fountain Roofing has been providing excellent service for 35 years. Let Lonnie assist you in choosing the roof perfect for your home and your budget. Commercial or residential, he can handle it all. Fountain Roofing continues to provide quality workmanship and will provide references upon request. At Fountain Roofing, we've got you covered. Call Lonnie at 706-692-6997. That's 706-692-6997. Since 1962, Gilmer Towing has been serving the North Georgia area and would like to say thanks to all of our customers. For over 48 years, Gilmer Towing has carried on a family tradition with an experienced and friendly staff that offers 24-hour damage-free towing, unlocks, and four-wheel drive recovery. So when you're stuck in a ditch, tires flat, or car won't start, give us a call. Local or long hauls, big or small, Gilmer Towing will get them all. Give us a call today at 706-636-4TOW. We've had Alpha Insurance since our first daughter. And when we had quadruplets, <laughs> we really needed Alpha. Now we need our own insurance with great rates, fast claim service, and a local agent we know. And we want to company our kids and grandkids can trust. <laughs> call Alpha. The best agents in the business call Ed Stepp in Blue Ridge. 
Georgia Medical Treatment Center now has two locations to bring you the high quality holistic care you've come to know and expect. We treat neck, back, and joint pain with chiropractic care and injection-based treatment without the need for surgery or prescription painkillers. Our medical weight loss program can also provide relief while ridding your body of toxins, pounds, and inches while improving your overall health. Call today for a free consultation, 770-345-2000, or go online to georgiamtc.com. With speeds up to 150 meg, ETC and Ignite delivers more, more, more. More shopping, more music, more learning, more streaming. More speed to power smartphones, movies, and streaming video. More speed for more devices in your home. And more room in your budget with ETC's low pricing and bundled discounts. Get the fastest internet around with Ignite's new 150 meg. More speed, more savings. Call ETC today. I'm Lawrence Smith, the University of Georgia. Today we have John Davis, former Georgia Tech All-American, Frank Ross, captain of the Bulldogs 1980 National Championship team in a Subway showdown. Subway. How many Subways does that Singleton own? He just up at number 17. He started in my hometown of LJ. Yeah, but he graduated from the University of Georgia. Hey guys, who's hungry? It looks like Subway and Singleton Food Services Incorporated, the winner again. Oh, Chevy runs deep in Canton at Bill Holt Chevrolet. Deeper selection, deeper discounts, and we're letting everybody know it. Not just Chevy buyers in Atlanta. Chevy buyers in Blairsville, Blue Ridge, Jasper, and LJ. If you're out there, we're right here with one huge selection at Truck HQ. Always get our lowest prices and friendliest service. Online, BillHoltGM.com. Because when you're talking trucks, you're talking Truck HQ. When Mike leaves town, it's a little scary. You never know who might be outside. But we feel safer inside knowing our home is being monitored by a local company. I can check our alarm from just about anywhere. So when we get home, I know it's safe. Get peace of mind for your family with a local company. Switch your current security monitoring to ETC Security and get six months monitoring free. Call ETC Security now or visit etcsecurity.com to learn more. Whether you're swimming in the sea or splashing in the pool, making a masterpiece or just making memories, writing a great American novel or writing your term paper that's due tomorrow. Whatever you do in life, Farmers is here to protect it. For all your insurance needs, call Donald Curtis in Blue Ridge. In today's changing world, some things should never change. Time-honored, compassionate services are what families have come to know with Roper Funeral Home. Our professional and courteous staff offers traditional services, cremations, as well as advanced funeral planning, which relieves the burden from those we love. Hello, I'm Kevin Roper. If you have any questions about the services we provide, we invite you to give us a call, stop by, or better yet, ask a family who has used our services. Well, we're back, y'all. Okay, Miss Vicky. Close that book. Miss Vicky, share a message with us today. Uh, well, what a segue because <laughs> all of those dressing, turkey, Thanksgiving food. This yep. is November, and it's a month to be thankful. And 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 the Lord gave me this on Sunday. I was sitting there, and um, it was really <sighs> supernatural. You know, I'll use the word supernatural. It, it's a God thing. And when you're in the presence of the Lord and of His Spirit, and He's leading you. Uh, you know it. If you hear a voice in your head saying da 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 and you're not sure, that's not God. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. when God speaks to you, mm -hmm. you're sure. And of course, there's always, you asked me to address your question about doubt when, you're, when your mom went through that period where, and I, I have had my tough. faith challenged. Yeah, I think tough. most of us who are mature in the Lord, you don't get mature in the Lord without some hard, hard trials. And I'm sure that's where she was, was at. And um, what if for somebody who's never known him and just insists that he doesn't exist, where do you get, how do you get in their brains? Well, number one, you don't. You pray that God will. You can, uh, Jesus himself said there's different kinds of ground. There's really hard, dry ground. There's rocky ground. There's real good soil for growing, you know, and it depends on where that person is in their life. 
you know, sad but true, Jesus said there is a broad road and there's a narrow road. And most people are on the broad road and they're going to stay there. And that is a hard message to share because we want everybody on the narrow road. But it's broad for a reason. There's more people on it. And you can tell them, hey, come join me on this narrow road. Um, and for whatever reason, they're going to say no. And the, the, one of the questions people, well, what about people who have never heard, who have never heard? God's got it under control. If that person has never heard of God and has never heard the gospel of Jesus, he's going to handle it, okay? He will. If that person, um, just like Native Americans, they never heard the gospel. But again, I go back to the first chapter of Romans. If you read nothing else, read the first chapter of mm -hmm. Romans. You get a lot out of that. God has put inside of us, every single one of us, the knowledge of him. It's in there. Now, whether you choose to water it or remain hard ground or rocky ground because Jesus said you know you plant the seed somebody else will come along and water that seed and if they if they want to if they want to know God they're going to know God but if they're for whatever reason they don't care we can't read other people's hearts we can't read other people's minds just because you're an atheist or a non-believer doesn't mean you're a Satan worshiper now, ultimately, you know, technically, when you get down to it, Jesus said, if you're not on my side, you're on his side. Mm -hmm. Then you need to come on over to Jesus' side. Um, but I wondered because yesterday I, I was talking about Justin being in New Orleans mm -hmm. and, and on the street with street people and, and horrible things going on. How do you bring somebody who just absolutely does not believe? You know, uh, you don't. Again, that's the mistake we make. We don't. We tell them about Jesus. We speak the name of Jesus. We share the love of Jesus. Um, there's a lot of bad information out there, and Oprah Winfrey is one of the worst people for this. It, it, they're bringing New Age components into Christianity. And people in, you know, <laughs> in Christianity have enough problems with their own arguments about, you know, what this book says without bringing in the New Age stuff. But this message that all roads lead to God, what's worse than a flat out lie is a truth that is twisted because it is a fact, technically, yes, all roads do lead to God. Ultimately, they lead to the great white throne of judgment and people don't like you know this is getting heavy this is the heavy heavy stuff we're all going to die we're all going to go to one of two places we're going to go to paradise some people call it Abraham's bosom and that's where we'll stay until God makes the decision to culminate all of his plans for earth lots of stuff happens uh, if you are not a believer in Jesus, you don't go to paradise, to Abraham's bosom. You go to the other side of the chasm. Jesus describes a big gorge. And on one side are his people. And on the other side are not his people. And there is suffering. There is torment. There was a man who went there and he said, Jesus send this guy over here to just put a drop of water on my tongue. And Jesus said, I'm sorry. He can't. He cannot come over there. You know, this is it for you. Mm -hmm. And this is Jesus himself. So when we, yes, Jesus is love and he offers, he sacrificed himself. Nobody killed Jesus. Jesus was not murdered. Jesus sacrificed himself. He could have called 10,000 angels at any time to come and take him off that mm -hmm. cross and say, forget it. That's what people miss sometimes. Jesus was not murdered. He sacrificed. He gave his life. And this man knew it. And he refused to accept that gift of salvation. Now he's in torment. And he says, Jesus, at least go tell my brothers. I've got five brothers. Don't let them come here. And Jesus said, your brothers have the prophets. 
they have people telling them about God, about Jesus, they'll either listen or they won't. Mm -hmm. And that's where that free will comes in. Jesus is not going to impose his salvation on you. He will never impose it on you. He gave it to you freely. You have to accept it freely. And that people could go, well, that doesn't make sense. Sorry, you know, that's God's plan. Take it up with him. But all roads do lead to God because everything belongs to God. Everything in the universe, everything, all those dimensions in which we exist. I think scientists believe there's 11 of them that they can identify. <laughs> Everything, the atoms that hold us together to the expanse of the universe, God created, it's His, and yes, it all leads to Him. But there's only one way that you're going to spend eternity with Him. On the good side, mm -hmm. on the paradise side, and that's through Jesus Christ. Any other road that does not have Jesus as the door to the Father is illegitimate. It will not work. You will not spend eternity with God. That's just a fact according to this book and according to the Spirit of God. Um, the scripture, this, this is my thankful, because I was thinking, you know, Thanksgiving, November. Turkey and dressing. Mm -hmm. Thankful. But what I'm so thankful of is the ability that we still have in this country, the United States, that I can be on a television show and speak these words of truth. Because like I said, in our country, we're, we're, we're sort of kind of post-Christian these days. People have either diluted the Word of God, just flat out mangled the Word of God, don't preach the Word of God. Uh, there are a lot of people who call themselves Christians who are not. There are people who don't care. I don't believe in Jesus, don't care. Uh, people who have never heard, you know, whatever their situation is. And Jesus himself said, you're gonna know if you're serving me correctly because people are gonna hate you. And that's what's happening. We see it all over the news. We see it in, in our conversations. We see it in our culture. People are hating. They don't wanna say they hate Jesus because Jesus was such a good guy. No, Jesus was the Son of God. But there are rules and regulations that you're not supposed to break. And when you have people you love, when you have people, you, you, everybody wants to be liked. Everybody wants to have friends. Everybody likes to be popular and well thought of. Jesus said, if you are not willing to give up, now listen, this is, this is harsh. Mother, father, children, sons, daughters, if you're not willing to put me above them, you are not worthy of me. Now that's what Jesus said. So if my son comes to me one day and says, if you love me, you will denounce Christ. I love you, but I'm not going to denounce Christ. I love you, but I'm not going to tell you this book says something it does not say. I serve the Lord gladly and with love, and sometimes people are going to hate me. They're not going to want to hang out with me because, oh, well, you think I'm living this way, so I'm going to hell. Ooh, I don't want to hang out with you. I get it. I really do. But I'm not giving up Jesus. We're, I'm done with that. I am, stick a fork in me, you're done, because he is my Lord. He is my Savior. I know him. I don't just believe in him anymore. I know him, and he's worth it. What he, I'm his creation, number one. And what he did to come down here and save my sorry hide, uh, yeah, I, I serve him ultimately. But I was so thankful that I'm still able to share the gospel. And I was reading this. This is 2 Timothy uh, chapter 4. And Paul was brought before Nero, Paul being the uh, apostle, disciple, who took the gospel to the Gentiles. If you're not a Jew, you're a Gentile. Mm -hmm. That's that, that simple. Only the Jews had this to begin with. And because of their rejection of Jesus as Savior, he said, okay, we're going to give it to the Gentiles. I mean, Jesus called Gentiles dogs. <laughs> I mean, you know, hello. Mm -hmm. It gets, like I said, it's a very interesting book. You should read it. Um, but he's, Paul has already, he's been to court. Paul has been imprisoned. He's been beaten. He's been near death. He's been, he has served the Lord with sacrifice and he's been to court for the final time 
and he's going to be put to death. And he knows this. And he's older now. And you can, I was trying to put myself in his frame of mind, which is really, I, I can't do that. But I just started weeping, you know, just crying because this man is tired. He is worn out. But uh, there go my chill bumps. I'll just read it. Paul has gotten the death sentence. He knows he's going to die probably the last months, maybe a year before he's finally executed. He knows this. Um, I'll just read. 2 Timothy chapter 4. I charge you, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom, preach the word. Be ready in season and out of season. And that means when it's convenient and when it's not convenient. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but according to their own desires, because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers and they will turn their ears away from the truth and be turned aside to fables. But you be watchful in all things. Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Fulfill your ministry. I am already being poured out as a drink offering, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day. And that day has a meaning. And not to me only, but also to all who have loved his appearing. Be diligent to come to me quickly, for Demas has forsaken me. Having loved this present world, he has departed for Thessalonica, Crescens for Galatia, Titus for Dalmatia. Only Luke is with me. Get Mark and bring him with you, for he is useful to me for ministry. And Tychius I have sent to Ephesus. Bring the cloak that I left with Carpus at Troas when you come, and the books, especially the parchments. Alexander the coppersmith did me much harm. May the Lord repay him according to his work. You also must beware of him, for he has greatly resisted our words. At my first defense, no one stood with me. All forsook me. May it not be charged against them. But the Lord stood with me and strengthened me, so that the message might be preached fully through me and that all the Gentiles might hear. Also, I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. And the Lord will deliver me from every evil work and preserve me for his heavenly kingdom. To him be glory forever and ever. Greet Prissa and Achilla and the household of Anisiphorus. Erastus stayed in Corinth, but Trophimus I have left in Miletus sick. Do your utmost to come before winter. Eubulus greets you, as well as Pudens, Linus, Claudia, and all the brethren. The Lord Jesus Christ be with your spirit. Grace be with you. Amen. And I was so moved. And it's, you know, I could, let me rephrase that. I could not imagine myself in this situation. But if this were me, you know, he's, he's, he's serious. I got to get the important message mm -hmm. out to you. And then he's like, oh, and bring me that cloak, you know, and, and he goes in and out of just the weight of knowing they're coming to cut my head off soon. But oh yeah, bring me that cloak because you know I might I could use it before they come and cut my head off. And he makes it a point to tell people there are going to be people who are teaching 
bad doctrine. They're going to be teaching lies. They're going to be teaching things that are not true. And then has, you know, somebody that obviously has treated him so bad, he's saying, God, have mercy on him. Have mercy on him. Let, God is going to take care of that. And he will. And he will. that he was, he was alone. Nobody stood with him when he was standing there getting his death sentence. But he still, the whole point of that chapter is preach the word, preach the gospel, and the gospel is simple. You believe that Jesus is the Son of God, that he came to earth in human form, he sacrificed his life for us, he died, literally died dead, as President Trump would say, as a doornail, right. dead as a doornail. Right. And he came back to life to prove that he was the Son of God. He didn't leave any doubt. He came back to life, really, really, really. He resurrected. And he appeared to over 500 people in one instance. Who knows how many total uh, he ate. He proved that he has the power over death. I never have to worry about dying. Now, when we lose our loved ones and they die, of course we grieve. Of course we miss them. It's been five years now since I left Don, and I lost Don, and I still mourn him, I still grieve him, but I don't worry mm -hmm. about him. Mm -hmm. And that, you know, that's the gospel. Jesus is the Son of God. He died and rose again to save you mm -hmm. and me. Mm -hmm. And if you want to know Jesus, like I said, just start <coughs> talking to him, he'll talk back. He will, if you're sincere and your heart is right, yeah. Jesus wants to save you. I told you about, um, I used to fall asleep praying all the time. And I was like, why do I do that? It's, it's natural. It's so weird, but it's, it's just not so weird. calming. It's natural. It's calming. Yeah. It's calming. It's natural. So I said, if you can't go to sleep, don't count sheep, just start praying. And there's Talk always the somebody shepherd. else to pray for and somebody else to pray for and somebody else you think. And I have even said amen and said, well, wait a minute, I forgot this, <laughs> you know. So it does calm your fears. And, it, and we all have fears. We all have fears for the children growing up in today's world. We have fears for the elderly that don't have enough money to live on for the rest of their lives. We have so many fears about what is happening in our world, but, but we also have the hope and the truth, and that is the truth. And it so. is the truth, it is. And he loves us so much. So my Thanksgiving message is thank you that we're still able to share the gospel without getting our heads cut off mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. this country, the United States. Mm -hmm. And no, not everybody believes like I do, some people are going to hate me for what I believe. They're not going to want to hang out with me. Uh, I love you, but not as much as I love Jesus. Right. And <clears throat> I told y'all yesterday, say, I'm going to keep wearing hot pink. <laughs> we got on our pink today. President Trump's going to be in Atlanta on Friday. Isn't it Friday? Yeah. No, I didn't and, know that. And there's opportunity to um, support him and to to pray for him. And I love that Franklin Graham every day says we need to pray for our president. Mm -hmm. We need to pray for our country. We need to pray for our president. We need to pray for each other. And we can turn this world around and make it a much better place to be. Look at the time. It's time for us to head out of here because we have an appointment with a photographer in a ballroom. See you and again one of soon. us can hardly walk for That's the right. cleaning for to cleaning get ready for that guy. Yeah. To get it done. Thank you for being with us. I'll see you again tomorrow when we're going to be talking about veterans. Very, very important. Please remember our veterans. We'll talk about that tomorrow. See you again soon, guys.